Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about PlayStation 3 emulation with RPCS3. And RPCS3 just added in a nice quality of life feature. Now, it's no secret that RPCS3 save states can be huge, they can be hundreds of megabytes. The RPCS3 development team has done their best to optimize this and reduce the size, but at the same time here they are still large and they can take time to save. And now there's a new quality of life improvement that helps you visualize the whole process. There were some people thinking that RPCS3 had crashed when they were trying to save a state. So instead of seeing nothing while saving a state, you'll see this brand new progress bar. Now save states do vary in size and they say the percentage shown is not accurate and is an estimation of the amount of bytes written, never actually reaching 100% before completion. They say 300 megabytes equals 50%, 600 equals 75, and 1200 equals 87.5%. Most games will quit saving at around 50%. While the progress bar might not be accurate, at the very least it's showing people that something is actually happening as opposed to thinking the emulator has frozen. Next up, if you're a fan of Tetris, you may be a fan of Tetris Reverse, then you may never have heard about it before. And that's because it was a lost prototype that has recently been rediscovered. There's a very interesting story behind this thing, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. Apparently, this prototype was conceptualized back in 2011. Unfortunately, I've got no idea if this game has been preserved somewhere online. There is a ROM that exists, I just don't know where it is. And they say here, when you see the gameplay videos and when you look at the design elements, this is Tetris for like 300 IQ people. Next up, we're talking about a deal that seems too good to be true, but apparently it's not. This is for a very good micro SD card, the SanDisk Ultra. And this is for the 1.5 terabyte model. Yes, you heard that correctly. 1.5 terabytes in a micro SD card. It's currently priced at $87.99 US dollars. It's on Amazon.com and it's exclusive to Prime members. As far as I know, this deal is currently active. I don't know how long it's going to be active for, though. And it's not as fast as the SanDisk Extreme, but at the same time here, for this price point, I mean, that's hard to beat. Next up, we're talking about a gaming handheld, and a very interesting one at that, the Ambernic RG35XX 2024 Edition. What makes this interesting is it's basically an RG35XX Plus in the original 35XX shell. Retro Handheld says pretty much everything about the 35XX 2024 is the same as the 35XX Plus, even down to the dimensions and weight. I don't know why this new handheld exists. I'm not complaining, I'm just confused. I mean, why wouldn't they just keep going with the 35XX Plus? Unfortunately, I don't know the release date nor the price, but let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about VPNs, and it appears that Atlas VPN is closing its doors on April 24th. They say it's joining forces with NordVPN. I'll drop a link to the full announcement in the description below. NordVPN is Atlas VPN's sister company. So if you've got an Atlas VPN account, you'll be migrated over to NordVPN until your subscription runs out. Auto renew will be turned off. And if you're asking why Atlas is shutting down, they say they've encountered insurmountable challenges. These include rapidly advancing technological demands, a highly competitive market, and the escalating costs of providing top tier services. To be honest with you, I have never used Atlas VPN. And if you're wondering about my top picks, Mulvad's up there because it's no BS. PIA because they've been proven in court, and Surfshark because it's easy and very inexpensive. Moving on, and we're talking about the rumored Xbox handheld, and this rumor keeps on getting steam here. Now Phil Spencer is talking about handhelds. I'll drop a link to this juicy Polygon article in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. It appears that Xbox is looking at one of two options. One here, making hardware, or two, bringing the Xbox experience to existing devices via software. Interestingly, in regards to handhelds, Phil Spencer says the things that usually frustrate him are more Windows-based than device-based, which is an area he feels some ownership of. He says he wants to be able to log in with a controller, and he's got his list of things he should do. Based on how I interpreted the article, it seemed they were leaning more to a software solution as opposed to a hardware solution, but I could be wrong. 
I think this may be a great thing for Windows devices. And speaking about remakes, check out this Grand Theft Auto 3 remake in Unreal Engine 5 with GTA 5 PC mods. This is absolutely gorgeous and something I wish Rockstar did for their definitive editions. If you are curious about this one, it's over on Flames Per Second YouTube channel and there's some very interesting links in the description. Next up, we're talking about Sega Dreamcast Naomi and a Thomas Wave emulation with Flycast Dojo. Flycast Dojo is a fork of Flycast, designed for online multiplayer. So at the time of filming, Flycast Dojo 6.110 pre-release is the latest update. There's a whole bunch of bug fixes, including an interesting change for offline mode. They say to make offline games run smoother for locals. This release introduces an improved quick map flow, allowing you to select a player port at the beginning of a prompt. And a quick map button is also available in the settings, in case you are unable to hit a menu button from your controller during a game. Next up, we're quickly talking about Twilight Menu++. For those who may not be aware, it's an open source DSi menu upgrade or replacement for Nintendo DSi, 3DS, and DS flashcards. So at the time of filming, version 26.8.0 is the latest update. They say they've improved the DSi theme's drop-down startup animation to closely resemble the one in the original DSi menu. They've added the ability to set the default starting directory by pressing select and X buttons. They've improved the .md file detection for Sega Mega Drive and Genesis ROMs, and a whole bunch more including a bunch of bug fixes. Next up, we're quickly talking about Sony, and it appears they're working on a holographic display for PlayStation consoles according to a brand new patent. Based on the designs, it appears this may work with a PlayStation, kind of like an accessory. I could be wrong though. And it also appears it'll function with hand gestures and touch. As with a lot of patents that are filed, we've got no idea if this is actually going to be made in production, but it's a very interesting concept. Let me know your thoughts about a Sony holographic interface in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about Cassette Beasts, which is an indie game over on Steam with an overwhelmingly positive review score. And this is getting a brand new multiplayer update on May 20th. Cassette Beasts, I'll say, is a Pokemon-inspired open-world RPG. And with this multiplayer beta update, you can party up with up to 8 players. Furthermore, they've announced a small collaboration with Moonstone Island, giving players an outfit for free in the next multiplayer update. And speaking about indie RPGs, next up we're talking about Maliki Poison of the Past. And this RPG has just been announced on Steam. It's currently up for pre-order. At this point in time, I haven't seen a firm release date just yet, but there are 40 days left in the pre-order campaign, so take that for what you will. Maliki Poison of the Past is headed to PC and Switch, and there's a whole bunch of different packages available. The cheapest one is the digital pack for about 30 euro. And last up here is a fun fact about Windows, thanks to Dave Plummer. So if you've ever formatted a USB stick or a drive in Windows, chances are you've seen this dialog box. It was written close to 30 years ago and has been largely unchanged. Now if you think Microsoft not really changing a dialog box for about 30 years was crazy, well it gets even crazier. That dialog box was designed as a temporary measure. It was designed one morning with the intention that it would be redesigned later and it was never redesigned. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.